So the demo that I'm going to show you, uh, the use case here, and, and I just kind of pulled this together. Uh, we have a 10 person organization uh, that are about to go on an extended break. Um, and how do you go in? They want to take all of their calls and forward all calls um, to the number 571-555-1212. And let's just say that's a, a voicemail and maybe it's a, a after hours auto answering system. Um, so how do we do that for 10 users? And I picked 10 just so we could, you know, in the interest of time, it could be 100, it could be 1,000. Uh, we could still get it done in a matter of minutes. Uh, so the implementation here is we're going to identify the individual actions and in control hub. Identify the matching APIs in developer.webex.com. And with the new uh, category structure in developer.webex.com, it should be easier than ever to pinpoint those APIs that we need to use and then implement and test. In this case, on the far right hand side, we see the little green boxes. Um, what I am going to use ultimately uh, in demo here today is the, uh, the people API. Uh, and I, just a, a moment on the people API. I think everybody knows the people API is the fundamental API for all provisioning activities across WebEx, not just WebEx calling. Um, so people, I think people is one, a, a little bit dated term, uh, but this is really the user API. So when you're in control hub and you're accessing users, you're licensing users, you're accessing services to users. The 1st thing you're going to need is that list of users. Um, so that's what we're going to use the people API is to get all the 10 users in the organization. And then we'll find the commensurate call forwarding API um, in Control Hub first, and then map it to the API that we use. And then we'll simply loop through all ten users and update the call forwarding the um, the call forwarding information. So with that, um, I think I'm going to take over share Phil. Yep. Yep. Go for it. I'm going to start by sharing my um, uh, Control Hub instance. And I just created created this account this morning, so this is this is rel this is relatively real because it is the um, and I I created the script to test things out this morning too. So um, and hopefully everything goes well and, and looks like there's some error there, which I'm going to close that. I don't know what that is, but that's not relevant for our demo. Um, but the key thing here is uh, this is an organization I created 10 users, Andy Anderson, Betty Botanical, Cindy Costas, um, 10 users in the organization. And if I select, and this is this is mapping what we're seeing here to the people API, this would retrieve all the users. And uh, within the calling tab of each individual user, um, there is a section down here below that is call forwarding. And in the case, this is Andy, but all the users are the same. Call forwarding is not turned on for the individual user. So what we need to do is we've identified the actual transactions. In this case, I would come to call forwarding and I'd select all call forwarding all and I'd set to a number, um, but we're not gonna turn that on uh, until we use it. We are gonna use the APIs to turn that on for hundred users. So to do that, I go to developer.webex.com and I go to the documentation section of developer.webex.com. Um, and I'm going to take this as an opportunity to show the uh, improvements that we've made. You know, first over here on the left hand side, you can see where it says WebEx calling beta and WebEx calling. Uh, so what's nice about the beta, it's got a guide that gives an overview of how that all works. So it says, how do I sign up for it? How do I get access to the beta program? And then I see all the beta categories and underlying APIs beneath it. So you can see there's quite a few. Uh, but previously, we had this sort of buried into the same experience with WebEx calling. Um, and under WebEx calling now, well, before we do, you'll see there's WebEx calling for Broadworks and WebEx calling for UCM. So we've called out the non-WebEx calling uh, products uh, into their own bucket, uh, which I had mentioned earlier. Under WebEx calling, we've got an overview, which talks about how the product works. And it, I'm going to zoom back out for a second. And you can see it's got the list of all the APIs. We're gonna be putting real-time links in here so you can access all the APIs from here. We've got SDK and tools, which I talked a little bit about, but I'll mention, uh, you know, we've got Python scripts and we've got SDK tools and a growing number uh, if, of, if there are uh, SDKs out there that we wanna make accessible to the uh, development community, you can use these to go even faster to build the APIs. We're going to have a what's new, not going to have, we have a what's new. So this lists out the what's new and what's coming soon. And it's still work in progress. 
we're going to be adding our known issues as well. So these are all new parts to the developer.webex.com experience. Um, love to hear your feedback. Uh, for now, if you want to share any feedback, feel free to share that with Joe. And Joe, hopefully you're going to get good feedback and not bad. But um, I'll, I'll let Joe handle the one-on-ones of that. Um, we do have guides and information on how to get started. But let's jump into the reference. If you remember, the two things that we wanted was the users. We wanted to list the users, and that's going to be found under the people API. So here's where we get the people API. So for example, if I wanted to list people, I can come here. And I can see an example. I can copy the code. I can generate a curl script or whatever, my, you know, whatever my development language is. I'm going to use curl for today. Uh, I can run this. I can literally run this um, operation and I can get the list of all users in my organization. In this case, it's 10. And if you'll notice, it is using a hidden uh, bearer token. I have already taken that token and I'm going to use that in my script. Uh, I'm not going to share it for the larger community here because we want to keep that pretty secure. Um, but that token is this key way to get that information from my organization. So I'm going to use the people API to list all the people. And then under user call settings, consistent with our direction of what we're doing in Control Hub, you can see there is a read call forwarding and then configure call forwarding. The call forwarding configuration in particular is what we're going to focus on here uh, in the next couple minutes. And let me make sure I'm just going to check my time here. I do have time here. So I'm going to hopefully get this done. And Phil, keep me honest. You can stop me in five minutes or or tell me if I if I didn't hit the mark here. But hopefully we're going to get this demo up and running and, and show you how we can do this in five minutes. Okay. Um, uh, so I'm a, a little old school uh, in how I do things. Um, I, I used to develop a long, 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 long time ago uh, in VI um, and using Bash scripts. So I'm just going to use Bash scripts to to um, to show how this works. On the right hand side, where it's a little this elongated view, is where I'm going to show the code view. Then on the left hand side, I'm going to show the run view. So I've got a script here, and you can see it's very simple. I have a generic get request, so it doesn't know what the URL is. Um, I can pass in the URL and it'll do a get. And then I have a put request, which is a, uh, an, a rest request, which updates. It does not create, it does not read, but it does the update. So that's, that's what that request is. And I can generically pass in a URL for that, as well as a JSON um, payload, so I can uh, configure my, my update. And then the first line here is a get request, and it's simply calling the people API. So over on this side over here, I'm going to run this. And you can see there's lots and lots of text. This is the JSON. This is the same thing that you're seeing on the, uh, the developer.webex.com, which I just showed. And I'm going to pipe that into a uh, utility program called JQ, which takes it and formats it into JSON. So all of it, it was already in JSON, but it just makes it a little bit prettier and easier to see. So that same bunch of text is now in pretty color-coded format. But I can use that same tool to get um, to show the display name of all the users. And there's my 10 users, Andy Anderson and Betty Botanical. Um, and for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to actually get the ID. So once I'm going to use this ID to um, to populate the uh, the call control API to update the call forwarding. So I'm going to come back to my script over here on the right. And I, I, I'm stealing in the interest of time a JSON request, which I'm going to pass into the call for, the call forwarding API which basically says, I want to turn on, I want to turn on call forwarding always. Okay, so we're gonna pass in that JSON and up here, I'm going to get the user ID. So, I'm going to comment this out and just see if this works. Nope. 
Okay. So what this is saying is it's processing. This is each of the IDs for each of the 10 users. And if you scroll down here, I'm going to loop through and I'm processing each user. And now I'm going to put the request. I'm going to make this call here to update the call forwarding API for each user. Now, what this is doing is each individually, it's looping through each one, and it's simply updating that one field um, with call forwarding. Now, if I go to my control hub and I refresh my user view, oh, and I got to reshare my, my call forwarding, my uh, control hub screen. But you can see Andy Anderson calling and call forwarding forward all calls. And you can now see that this is checked for all users in the organization. So I realize this is a rushed view of showing uh, the world of things. Uh, but, you know, I put this script together. I got up this morning, spent about 20 minutes putting it together, and I was condensed it down here for a five-minute view. But you can see if I wanted to update 100 users or 1,000 users or, or more, um, I could do that in a matter of minutes, um, and it's fairly easy to use. And I just picked out that forwarding all calls. Any number of cases you could use to update uh, your call forwarding.